Welcome to Meet a Revolutionary. Today we are thrilled to be speaking with Serena. Serena is a Cayuga Panamanian Wolf Clan woman from the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory with a passion for self-determined community development, action, and futures. Serena is in several indigenous environmental projects in her community of Six Nations and beyond, and we're looking forward to learning more. Let's meet Serena. Hey, Serena, welcome to Meet a Revolutionary. How are you? Good, how are you? We're, We're doing, doing well. well. Thank you so much. We'd love for you to introduce yourself today. Skano, Serena Nigao san, Gaya Bohono Niwa Kwenzo dan, Ote Yuni Niwa Geshout dan. So, hi, I'm Serena Wandi Sabo. I am a Cayuga Panamanian Wolf Clan woman from the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. Amazing. And Serena, we are so excited to be speaking with you today, and we'd love to hear how your day to day work uh, contributes to a cleaner and healthier future. So my work does go into two different avenues of academic research, but also community organizing and activism. And so with research, I'm all over the place from working on indigenous uh, two eyed seeing climate change course. So working on script writing and interviewing, collaborating on a course to working with different First Nations, such as Tobik First Nation in New Brunswick and Pictou Landing First Nation in Nova Scotia and focusing on comprehensive community-based health data, uh, focusing on environmental impact so that we can see if health is being impacted by uh, the environment and the industry around them. Outside of the research that I'm doing, I focus a lot on 7Gen and Protect the Track, one's Indigenous youth energy, uh, trying to push for the empowerment of Indigenous youth within the energy sector uh, and Protect the Track is it's my home project. Uh, working with my community, focusing on um, the empowerment of Haudenosaunee sovereignty and land stewardship uh, on my home territory. Wow. That's incredible. Incredible. And you sound very, very busy. Yes. I'm, curious, <laughs> I'm curious to know, how did you first get involved in inv Indigenous environmental health governance? So actually, it all started a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. I was working on um, working at my community's development corporation, but something came up and with a community energy project, a hydro line project, there was community members that were resisting the project going through. And so I'm thinking I'm working for a positive future when it comes to energy and clean energy, but I also, it made me check and realize that, oh, we always need to come back to community. We always need to come back to the people and to see what they want and how this, um, will impact them. And it really made me think, these relationships, why can't they govern how we do environmental projects? Why can't oh, they gosh, govern yeah. why can't they govern our our societies and our cultures and and how we look at uh, clean energy and how we look at climate justice? Because right now we're in a crisis. And yeah. so without being able to come back to our roots and see this such a personal connection that everyone has to the land we're not going to get there. And so my research and interest really comes from, I believe that these relationships to all human and non-human kin can connect us uh, and can create new pathways towards a sustainable future that, like my people, we've always been um, following those original instructions to um, take care of the lands and waters that we come from. That is so powerful, wow. And at Revolutionary, we always speak about the power of dreams. And I'd love to hear from you a little bit more about your dream of creating an eco youth home. Great, yes, uh, this is actually a dream of not just mine, but my mom as well. Oh, wow. And so uh, it goes into this whole story, but both my parents were actually homeless youth in Toronto when they were younger, that's how they met. They're displaced from their homes. They're they're houseless and they don't necessarily have anywhere to go. And so just like I touched how we're so intimately connected to those to our environments and place, uh, my parents were dispossessed of that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so now I come back into my home community and I still see there's a crisis of houselessness, but also a crisis within development on my terry of climate crisis and how I see that that's all interconnected, right? So my dream one day is to create an eco youth home on Six Nations that we're able to do land-based learning and healing while also working through our community and family traumas that can help us lead to better futures. Wow, that Thank is so inspiring. Thank you so much, Serena, for sharing that. I yes. love that vision and I love that it's grounded in your 
not only your experiences, but also your parents' experiences and the work that you all have been committed to. I just think that's so wonderful. And you mentioned the word crisis quite a few times. And the reality is that we are living in a climate crisis. With the pressure of the, these mounting issues, how do you handle all of this as an environmental advocate and activist? So it is a lot, but I guess I look back to all those who have come before me mm -hmm. and I think about um, the transformational change that they've all faced. And, and like my ancestors, they've been experiencing climate change since settlers came to this land. And so I think of them and how they've never given up mm -hmm. and that I'm able to do this work today because they've been doing this for centuries. And so to know I have the power of my ancestors, of my community, of my family, and of those yet to come, it grounds me to know that there's something greater and that we can all work together and um, create a healthy future if we really put our minds to it. And you mentioned the organization Protect the Tract. Can you share a little bit about why the organization is important to you? Protect the Tract came as a result of um, land defense in my community at 1492 Landback Lane, where they, there was encroaching housing development on the territory that didn't get any consent. And so we have so many community members who are putting their bodies on the front line mm -hmm. and are sacrificing so much so that we can have a home for the future generations, that we have land for our people to, to gather, to be who we are. And, and they can't keep doing this. This is happened multiple times, these resistance, and it puts everyone at a pause. And so Protect the Track came out of um, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, our traditional governance system, saying, no, this is, we're putting a stop to this development. And they put out a moratorium on development saying, there's no development along the Haldeman Track that can go in place without the consent of the Haudenosaunee. And so once this moratorium on development and this announcement was made, Protect the Track came. Wow. And it's a Haudenosaunee-led project that is focusing on um, creating research capacity, building a uh, policy development and developing capacity for civic engagement mm. and for people to get involved themselves uh, through the enacting of our sovereignty and through the promotion of Haudenosaunee land stewardship. Like I said, how my parents were dispossessed from their lands and like so many other people have been dispossessed, Protect the Track is trying to bring, um, bring those people home, is trying to build that community again and is trying to protect our land so that we can see a future full of Haudenosaunee land stewardship, our families thriving, our people being healthy, and hopefully fighting this climate crisis because we need to be fighting it one community at a time as well and coming together that way. Wow. I think that's incredible. I think that's so powerful. Yeah. And in addition to Protect the Track, we do a lot of wonderful work with 7 Gen. And the origin of the name Seven Gen is inspired by the Lakota prophecy, which says that the seventh generation will be the one that leads and brings about change. What does the power of youth mean to you? Uh, I just think youth are the transition. Youth have, and young people, have a completely different world view than mm. those who are in these decision-making rooms right now in, in government or in industry and whatnot. In my culture, we, we believe that our young people are very sacred because mm. they just came from the sky world. So they were closer to creation itself. And so being closer, they're able to connect with their more spiritual side, also bringing wisdom and knowledge that we don't necessarily have because we've been on earth for so long, mm -hmm. right? And so we need to be listening to our youth. Um, when I think about, when I think of this, how our youth is the power, someone had mentioned that people were talking about young people and how they're the change makers mm -hmm. of tomorrow. They're the future generation change, maker, change makers. And I think, no, we're the change makers yes. of today. Yes. We are the ones making these bringing these new thoughts in, bringing, creating new decisions, um, bringing new perspectives in. We're changing things around because for too long, things have just been the way they are. And, and I think youth, especially in this generation, are ready to make a difference because it's all we can do, right? Exactly. Yes, we don't have exactly. the luxury of sitting on the sidelines like perhaps past generations have tried to. I think that that urgency is exactly as you said, what drives so many of us to take action today mm -hmm. in preparation for the future.
So Serena, we've been so inspired by all of your incredible work, and we really believe in people supporting each other's missions and building community. So I'd love for you to share how viewers can support your mission. Listen to Indigenous youth, listen to Indigenous peoples, find out whose land you're on, and start building those relationships, because that's the start of creating a just climate future. That is amazing. Yeah. A just climate future, that is absolutely the aspiration. So thank you so much, Serena, for reminding us of that today and for this beautiful conversation. We are so grateful. Thank you. Now go. To learn more about Serena and to support her incredible work, please visit revolutionaire.me forward slash Serena. And be sure to stay tuned for more episodes of Meet a Revolutionary.